traveled to Japan for 13 days, visiting the cities of Tokyo, Osaka, Nikko, Kyoto, and the quiet little town of Fujikawa Guchiko. Join us in our adventures as we taste, explore, and experience Japan. We left the Philippines by the newly opened Bactan Cebu International Airport Terminal 2 and landed in Japan at Narita Airport around noontime. After clearing out of the immigration, we got our tickets for the airport limousine. Depending on where you're staying in Tokyo, it might be cheaper and more efficient to take the train. In our case, the airport limousine was the best option. The one-hour bus ride will take us to Kasai Station. From there, we'll take the Tokyo Metro Tozai Line to Nishikasai. We stayed at a mid-range business hotel. Most tourists would find this space small. For us, it was compact and comfortable. It definitely had everything we needed during our stay. It was too comfortable, in fact, that we spent the remaining hours of our first day sleeping. Our first destination, of course, is the Kumbini or the convenience store. We went to the 7-Eleven near our hotel because we skipped dinner and we were starving at 2am. The 7-Eleven in Japan is nothing like the 7-Eleven we have in the Philippines. There's just wider options for beverages, cup noodles, and even entertainment for all ages. We're all set up for today. Uh, today is going to be Disneyland and Disney Sea. Oh, we're going to Disney Sea. For the next five days, we will be staying in the quiet neighborhood of Edogawa. Our hotel conveniently has access to the Tokyo Metro Tozai Line, which can take us all the way to Nihonbashi Station, which in turn gives us access to the nearby Tokyo Station, where almost everything else is connected. The other reason we're staying in Edogawa is because our hotel offers free shuttle to take us to the Disney Resort Park, which happens to be conveniently nearby. The Edogawa area is a perfect blend of urban and residential living. It's a good place to start if you want to get yourself acquainted with everyday Japanese life. On our second day, we went to Disney Sea. We booked our ticket via Kluk and exchanged it at the JR Maihama station. Disney Resort is divided into two parks, Disneyland and Disney Sea. So there's a monorail that goes on a loop that will take you to either parks. You'll have to use an IC card or get a one-way ticket for each ride because it isn't covered by the JR Pass or the Tokyo Metro Pass. We'll have a separate video discussing the different passes you can use during your stay in Japan.
The first ride we went to was the Nemo and Friends Aqua Rider. It's a popular ride so we had to wait in line for half an hour. During this time, we ate the snacks we bought from the convenience store. The actual ride took about 4 minutes, but it was definitely worth it. It's a 4D ride that takes you on a submarine, and we definitely recommend it for kids and older adults if you are traveling with one. The next ride we tried was the Tower of Terror, and this ride took us by surprise since the briefing instructions were all in Japanese, so we had totally no idea what to expect. Be warned, this is a free fall ride. You'll be taken a few feet up and dropped a couple feet more. It was scary, but did we have fun? Hmm, you can check this photo and be the judge. We got into the Indiana Jones ride using a fast pass. It's free, and to get one, you just need to scan your tickets at the attraction entrance, and it will give you the time when you can enter the attraction without having to fall in line. It will also give you the time when you can get your next fast pass for another attraction. This was definitely the best ride we've had for that day. As noon was approaching, we explored the Arabian coast area. We had our lunch here at the Kasbah restaurant. They serve curry with rice and pita bread. The food was superb, but like any other theme parks, it's a bit pricey. Now, if you're not into curry, no worries, because there's plenty of other options in the park. Have I mentioned earlier that Disney Sea is huge? So yeah, be prepared to come in your most comfortable shoes as you will be doing a lot of walking. Even if you're not into rides, there's multiple ways you can enjoy the park. There are a lot of themed areas where you can explore and take photos. There's also an endless selection of shops if you're looking to purchase original Disney merchandise. Their Duffy store, which is quite big in Japan, has a wide array of items you'll surely love. If you're not familiar with Duffy, he happens to be Disney Resort's famous bear. It wouldn't be Disney Sea without experiencing a water ride, so we went on the Disney Sea Transit steamer line. This is a good way to give your tired feet some rest, plus you get a chance to see the entire park from a different perspective. The villain show in this EC was a feast for the eyes. They put great attention to detail, especially with their use of pyrotechnics and music. Make sure to get the What's Happening Today flyer to check out show schedules. If you want to enjoy the show, you need to be at a location early so you can find a good spot before it starts to get crowded. As it was getting dark, we went to explore the Mermaid Lagoon. 
This is the place for fans of The Little Mermaid because this is where you can find Triton's Kingdom. We did not have enough time to line up for the journey to the center of the earth ride. We'll probably come back for that next time. But we were able to get on the Toy Story Mania, which is the most popular ride in Disney Sea. We were already so tired that we forgot to film the experience. Even on a not so crowded day, we had to wait in line for an hour to get onto the actual ride. And that wraps up our day at Disney Sea. On our next video, we'll be seeing more of Tokyo. Then, we'll get a taste of rural Japan as we travel to Nikko. And we'll also take a look at the different passes we use to navigate Japan's complex but efficient public transportation systems.